Hey guys, quick intro to this video. Um, this is a 2006 Volkswagen Passat that has a incorrectly installed timing belt. And what I did is uh, this particular segment I pulled out of a series that is available on Scanner Dan or Premium. And uh, the reason I pulled this segment out and wanted to share it with you guys is I think more of you need to know about the PicoScope waveform library. This is something new, maybe in the past year or two that they've developed. And what is unique about this one and why I really want you guys to know about it is this isn't just a an image. Um, all of the other waveform libraries that I've used, you're pulling an image off of the internet and you're you're looking at that image and you're comparing where they line up. Well, with the Pico uh, waveform library, I'm actually pulling the Pico file from another user like me who would upload a known good one um, and share it with the rest of the Pico world. And what's nice about it is I can download his picture and compare it to mine. And, and it's an active file, so I can move cursors, I can measure, I can zoom, and it's just awesome. So I want, to, I want you guys to see where I did that in this video. And if you want to see the rest of the series, um, please head over to Scanner Dan or Premium. There's a 14-day free trial. Uh, this particular series is probably a three or four part one. Uh, it's not done yet. At the time I'm filming this, it's not done, but um, it will be it will be three or four parts. Um, crazy, crazy case study. Oh, uh, the owner of the car put the belt on and then did all kind of testing and ended up hurting some things along the way. And man, we get into coil controls and uh, we get into sensor circuits and computer grounds and sensor grounds and the five volt reference and really, really cool one. And I did that with my class at Rosedale Technical College. Um, so one last time, I'll show you the video. It's the PicoScope. You can go to PicoAuto.com and learn more about the Waveform Library. And then you can head over to Scanner Dan or Premium right here on YouTube to see what else I'm doing on that channel. Uh, right now I have about 300 videos. Um, 200 of those will be classroom type lectures that follow my book page for page and, and my class at Rosedale Tech. And then probably 100 or so exclusive case studies that uh, I've now uploaded to that channel. So thank you for your time. I hope you guys enjoy this segment. All right, so wait, let's let's talk about what we did. No, I don't need that feed right for, for this part, yeah. Okay. Um, we have cam and crank and our coil control signals not connected, right? Or, you oh, you are on coil. No, that's fine. We can leave it. Um, so you guys know what we did off camera. We re-jumped the sensor ground circuit, um, the one that was reading 4.1 volts on the computer. We grounded that so we could get a... Uh, a cam signal. So that's all we need. Um, go ahead and crank it and hopefully we can find a known good waveform here to go by. Keep cranking. Keep cranking. Keep cranking. Okay. That works. Let's go back a page here. Um, a little filter would be nice. How do you like that filtering? It's pretty awesome. cool, huh? Yes. All right, so what we want is a couple of rotations of that to really analyze this. And, and what we want to do is we want to take these two guys, put them together, and really find out where, where they correspond with each other. But the thing is with this is I need a known good waveform. So let me save this first. And then you're going to check your IATN or whatever? Yes, I'm going to talk about that. All right, so. Um, Let's talk about IATN for a second. IATN is a place where I go to get waveforms. Uh, that's International Automotive Technician Network. And I did look on IATN, and let's see, do I have that tab open? I, I found one, uh, and I actually contacted the guy to make sure that he was okay with me using uh, his waveform, but it ended up being, it ended up being on a, a 2006 volt, uh, TDI, it was a turbo diesel, so I couldn't, I couldn't use that one. So then um, another one that's available for you Pico users, but you have to have a scope connected to use this, and you have to sign up for an account, which is free when you have a Pico. But if you go to the Waveform Library browser, it uh, connects 
up your scope and verifies that. And I think I should still be signed in here. Yeah. And so I did a search already. Um, one of 24. I don't know why my info isn't still here. Uh, this diesel info or Volkswagen. I can't get over there. A little offset. Here's the one I want to use, I think. Let me get my info back in here. Hang on. I don't want to be too specific because I don't want to put the model in because this engine would be used and I actually don't want to put the year in just yet. This is a 2.0. That's important that I get a 2.0 engine. Um, so I have 24 possibles for a Volkswagen with a 2.0, although that's diesel. So we don't want, see up here that says diesel. We want to have primary fuel, which is petrol. That's the Great Britain company, so petrol. As a, there's a 99. This one would probably be closer to us. This is a 2009 uh, two liter. Ours is a 2006. So the nice thing about this, guys, is when I open this waveform, and this is what's unique about the Pico website, um, it actually opens the waveform in my scope. So if I go back to my scope now, I should have that waveform loaded. Do I? Hang on. Thank you. Now you see why I saved that picture. So let me close this box out. This is that waveform. So not only, it's not, the nice thing about it as opposed to other sites is this is not a JPEG image. This is something that I can m manipulate and move with my scope. And I can zoom in and out. And, and actually what would be helpful for us right now is to take a reference waveform. Do you remember how to do that? We go tools, reference. These are the ones we made uh, yesterday on that, or the day before on a car we did together. We'll take these two channels, double click B, double click C, and then I just made reference waveforms for that. And then I'm saving that, and now what we can do is we can open our folder. This is us right here, the one we just saved. I might need that file back again. I can save that file if I want to. This is ours. It already looks off. And then we take our views and we turn, sorry, tools, reference, um, oh, it didn't let me keep it. Why didn't it? Because I didn't save the file, maybe. Do you have to duplicate it? No, they should be there already. They're not. I need to redo. Why don't you reference those ones and then open the other one and throw those I, ones on there? I might be able to do that. Let's try that. Tools, reference, so we'll go A. No, we want, yeah, A and B. A and B, and hit OK. Okay, that should have worked. I don't know why it didn't. File, waveform library. I wish it would keep that there. Uh, I, need, I need that file back. Save this file. All right, so this is that, that one again. Let, let's see if it allows me to pull these in. Yeah, here, here's ours. And so what we want to look at, guys, is uh, our frequencies are going to be off and, and, and things like that. But what we can now do, the reference waveform is dim. So this is mine. The red trace is my. The green and red. I don't want to zoom that far. Hang on. Um, the green and the red were his. Yeah. Okay. The blue and the red are mine. Um, I really should have had more of this in here. Did we? Thought that I did. I thought so as well. Yeah. Well, this should be enough because from here, from, from here to here is 360 to here is 720. So um, if we look at uh, 720 of his would be... This is going to be a little bit harder. Can you draw on it with your smart board? Yes, I can. I mean, it might not be the most. Yeah, we could probably do that. Um, let's go with a blue pen. So looking at this sink 
and then it looks like the see the um, pattern here of the uh, this one right here looks like it's falling right in line with the sink can you see that pretty close anyway yeah. so there would be in 720 looking from here to here in 720 I have a, a skinny one and two fat ones and a skinny one do I have that pattern there's um, 720 the skinny two fats and a skinny okay and it looks like the second fat one the leading edge of the second fat one which would be leading trailing leading this one lines up right with yes yeah, see that right yeah. with the sink you see how we're off yes so it looks to me like the timing belt is off on this okay um, we wouldn't want to sell the customer a computer with the timing belt being off the other thing would be compression would need to be verified on this motor so here's what I think happened I think the timing belt was put on incorrectly and I think the computer doesn't know what to do with these signals and so it wouldn't start and I think in the process of him checking everything he did something and he cooked his computer ground circuit I don't know what he did but he did something and and so I think that's the progression that's how we can explain that the car ran before the timing belt broke and now we have a faulty computer this would be operator error mechanic error but it's his car so you know he bought it that way and he he'll have to suffer the consequences of random wire cutting and poking and letting things touch each other that's what we'll attribute it to um, let's I'm, I'm gonna do this before we end this part I, I want to take a little bit more zoomed in level of his capture here uh, let me clear my ink do you need me to sign that Jess you take an ignition coil or an ignition try that an ignition coil ignition. what do you mean he has oh with the ignition switch yeah what he did in there? No, he has another one in there. He swapped over. He swapped ignition switches? Yeah. Oh, I, I have no idea. I don't know the cause. Uh, but let me, let me look at this line up here. It almost looks... So again, the, you guys see where that line's up? Almost. It's definitely within that knot. It's the leading edge of that second fatter pulse. Okay. 720, look right here. Leading edge. There's, here's my 720 leading edge. Look how far off we are. It's not even close. Now this is a 2009 and ours is a 2006. We do see the same patterns. I know my amplitude is off. Not an issue, right? Uh, we're cranking. Yeah, we're cranking and I'm only grabbing one wire. If Remember, some of these VRSs have floating grounds and to see full amplitude, you want to grab both wires. Uh, not the case for us we're doing a relationship issue and it looks like our relationship is off we could look at another one it looks like the see the um, skinny fat fat skinny see the trailing edge of the skinny on ours yeah. is lined up with that let's see the 720 here's his 720 and we'll go skinny fat fat skinny the trailing edge of the skinny on that one is, is almost dead on so what where we're talking about so look at look I want you guys to look right here look right there okay pretty much aligned and now look where this one's at same amount of teeth off. Look where we're at. Should be over here, right? We're, we're like in here, we should be over here. Yep. Th this belt is, is not on right. Timing belt needs to be removed and replaced correctly. Compression needs to be verified. This is supposed to be an interference engine. It doesn't sound good to me. I don't think it's fruitful for us to check compression because if compression's low, can't we also attribute compression being low with the belt being off? We could. Um, I'm not going that direction. For us, I want to focus the rest of our time on that computer. And I want to shut this down. I want to take that cover off and see if we can find something burnt in there. Okay. Okay? Yes. All right.